YouTube, what's going on? Horse Racing Gamer here. Welcome back to Gallup Racer 2001. We are halfway through year two uh, in this playthrough, and we have a new foal on the way. Uh, or I should say, we already have our original horse ready to go, Night Factor. Uh, Night Factor is uh, from Glue Factor out of Miss Nighty. And uh, he'll be in his first, we'll be putting him in his first race pretty soon. But we just have uh, three horses. We got a new filly and uh, water walking. And we have deep timing still. He is our first Galbraith original in this game. And then there's a look at the newest one at Night Factor uh, with two R's. Really looking forward to seeing what he's going to be able to do. But let's go racing here with uh, deep timing. As always, appreciate you guys' love and support on the channel. Make sure to smash the like button. It does help out a lot. And share this video if you are on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It does help out a lot. Um, good news for the 2004 fans, Got Racer 2004 fans, which I think is practically everybody on this channel. Uh, we will be back in that game very soon. I would say probably within a week. Um, within a week or two weeks maximum. Uh, when this video goes up, 2004 will be back. And uh, yeah. I've decided that's probably a game I'm going to... Well, I'll talk about it here in a little bit. All right. Let's first handle Deep Timing's race here at 7 Furlongs on the dirt. Conditions are fair, and we have a chance to win with Deep Timing. Now, with Deep Timing, we start his spurts a lot later. So I have to keep that in mind. And... I forgot if, I forgot if he likes to race towards the front. It hasn't been that long since I uh, last played this game. It's only been maybe about a week or so. Okay, let's see, get a good start. And he gets out well, thankfully. And he is a front runner, I just needed to remember if that was the case. And we're not in first, he's still struggling to get up there. I can't remember if the last episode I said, he had great starts, but it just takes him forever to get to the front. You know what I mean? <laughs> And I think with uh, the other uh, Philly horse that just retired and used for breeding, she would get out really well when she didn't need to. Something like that. All right. So this is kind of a warm-up race because again, I've totally forgotten what I've what works for this horse. We're not gonna whip yet because he is he is rolling well. Deep timing, looking good. Can we get him another win? Deep timing, trying to get up there at the wire, just got it. <laughs> Kick off the video with a win for our Galbraith original deep timing. Look at him digging in the stretch, man. You talk about totally digging down. This is going to be a photo finish, but I'm pretty sure we got up there in time for the win. And yes, they're going to give it to deep timing. What a win. Another win for deep timing. And it was a great way to kick off the episode and a great way for Deep Timing to add another win. He's doing really well on the dirt. Doing really well. Extremely well, to be completely honest with you. So I'm really happy with how he's been performing on the dirt. And we can continue to, to, to use that going forward. Huge win for Deep Timing. And uh, that, that is good stuff. Now let's go ahead and look at him right quick because I don't remember if we can actually see when he's supposed to be. We still don't know exactly when he's going to be at his best. I'm assuming it's like most horses in this game. That's his third win on the season. And I'm assuming he'll be at his best when he's four, four and a half years old. Uh, no idea how much it's going to drop once he hits its peak. But it'll be interesting. Now since we're in June, we can actually get Night Factor ready for a race. So Night Factor... Um, do I even have a distance for him? I don't know if I have a distance for him. Let's see. 7 to 10. Okay, 7 to 10. I'm surprised I didn't put it in my spreadsheet. But we're good to go now. He started off with an 82-78 overall for turf and dirt. So now we're going to see. He does like to race in the back. Um, let's go ahead and get him in his first race. 7 to 10 furlongs on the turf would be ideal. And I'm not seeing... Okay, six furlongs. I mean, like I said, two-year-olds in this game, your first opportunity with them is always... There's almost always going to be six furlongs, which isn't ideal for every horse, but that's kind of what's available. And water walking. We're going to give her a little bit more time. 
and I'm pretty sure I acquired her. She likes to run uh, eight to 10 furlongs. I acquired her because she is a long-term project. As you can see by her growth, um, growth type in the bottom right of the chart, she is not going to be at her best, arguably until she's at six or seven years old, basically when she won't be able to run after her seventh um, season. So she's a long-term project, which means uh, I'm not going to have to enter her in so many races between now and the next couple of years. I'll kind of, you know, try her out a couple of races here and there just to see what I think works best for her. But we don't have to, you know, run her too much. I, I don't want to do that, despite the fact that obviously she is going to be with us until she essentially retires. But 8 to 10 furlongs. Um, wait, what's her rating again? Is she pretty much the same on both? Yeah, she can pretty much run on both. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth between turf and dirt. Um, she definitely is not a grade three horse. So we have to keep her to opens. And we'll run her. Now, there's a handicap, I think, for this race. 106 pounds. Let's see. Which one will she carry less weight? San Diego or the other one? She carries a little bit more weight here. So we'll do this race. Maybe we'll actually have an advantage. So, water walking. We'll enter her in that race. And then, um, yeah. Deep timing, giving him some more time off. His third win, and Night Factor will be up next month. I think Deep Timing will be ready to go here again. He's looking good. Deep Timing. He's turned out to be uh, pretty solid. I mean, the fact that we've gotten a couple of wins with him is, is really good. I'm really happy about that. I'm um, still not going to run him in, in any grade threes. He's been doing really well on the dirt. Ideally, if I could run him in the dirt eight furlongs again, that is what I'm going to do because I feel like he's doing really well with that. Um, we can only race him four more times this year, which is fine. Really enjoying this game. Really enjoying this game. But what I was going to say originally in the beginning of the video is that because I know Gallup Racer 2004 is so popular on this channel and it's what people really want to see, um, I, I've decided I'm going to keep that game going all the time. You guys know how I've been doing it where I play through a season in the game and then I rotate to a new one. Well... Because that game is so popular, I feel like that's the game that should be the exception to that list. So I will keep 2004 constantly going. And the other games are the only ones I'm going to rotate. Because um, like I said, I know a lot of people subscribe to this channel for Galbraith for 2004. So I figure that's a game I'll pretty much always play and then the other ones I'll rotate. Because um, I figure, like I said, that, that's what people want the most. So water walking, uh, we have a chance to finish in the top five here. Um, this is Toronto. This track does have a slope, so we may struggle in the stretch. It depends. Running on the turf here. We'll see how she handles it here today. But yeah. Um, this might be a little bit shorter of an episode. I'm not sure. It all depends. No, I forgot where she likes to run. Front or the back? Pretty good start here. And she likes... Okay, she's midfield. Perfect. That is pretty ideal. Midfield or the back, it, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, the horse will pretty much be comfortable. As long as they're not in first place. <laughs> or anywhere towards the front. So she is in the blue right now. Um, so as far as where we're going to make our move, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm going to move her inside. But I don't know if anything is going to free up. This, this, this could be hit or miss. This could be hit or miss, so we'll see what these other horses do and see if we can maybe find a gap. There's nothing is... Okay, maybe we have a gap. We might have a gap. We'll try to squeeze. See, we're going to move here. There's a gap right there. Okay, let's see what water walking can do here. Ah, uh, you... Ca are you kidding me? Now, if I did that... Oh, that would be an inquiry. That would be a big inquiry, but the AI can just move right in front of you, and we're not going to get into the money we would have certainly had a chance if i didn't have to move like that horse had no reason to move there but you know it's it's inevitable in this game the ai are just going to do that they're literally programmed to not even know a human player is there <laughs> it's like the only gripe about these games ever really it's just the ai more than anything just racing you as if you're not even there which i talk about is always a thing in a lot of racing games but in this game especially look great rider eval so clearly we did what we needed to do with her uh deep timing us up again or i think deep timing is up again it could be night factor i don't know i guess we'll see i guess we'll see but um yeah water walking 
like I said, that's the only thing about midfield horses in this game. Um, you do have to worry about the positioning. There's a beautiful red robin outside of my window, literally as we speak. And I've seen it here several times, so clearly it must nest nearby. Um, it is so amazing just to see it right, literally right outside of my window. It's just right in the bush, just hopping around from uh, branch to branch. Absolutely magnificent, man. Love, love red robins. I love just anything in regards to wildlife in general, but red robins for birds, they are truly, truly beautiful creatures. So, here we are, on the dirt again with deep timing. Uh, odd today not looking as great as a previous race, but still, deep timing, I think, has usually, has typically ran better than what his odds say. I believe an Amazon package just got here for me. Which I will get after this video. Uh, we're right next to the favorite in post position five. He's in post position four. She. Uh, slam Slammy. That's yeah, a he. So, let's see what we can do. We have to get out to the front. Let's see if we can get a really good start here with deep timing and really try to set the pace here. Get out well, get out well, and he gets out okay, which means we're really going to have to push him to the front now. Go, 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 sir. Go, deep timing, go. And he's not really going. This is the only thing about him. He doesn't go to the front like I want him to. Now he's kind of going there. Now he's comfortable. This is fine. The favorite is literally right next to us with the blinkers right there in the red. That is the favorite. So, ideally, if I want to have a chance to beat him, I'm probably better off waiting until he gets going. Because deep timing can show some speed and the last little stint of his, of his stretch burst. So, that would probably be our best opportunity to try to catch the favorite. And we're going to stay right here. we got plenty of space. If he's going to go now, and he's going to move over quite a bit, and that's fine. 1.8. Now we're going to go. Now we're going to see if we can maybe try to run down the favorite and catch him. Deep timing is closing in. We are closing in. And then look at this horse on the on the right of us. That is not the favorite. That horse is flying. Deep timing is still going to finish in the money. And that horse absolutely rolls past the favorite. Not expecting that. But we still finish fourth, which is good. And unfortunately, we just did not have the speed to uh, continue to go. Cash collect. Ends up getting past the favorite Slam Slammy, or Slam Sammy, to win that race. Not expecting that at all. And my package was left here, so I'm probably going to go and grab that right quick, because I don't trust people. Especially when it comes to Amazon packages, believe it or not. People will actually steal your Amazon package. It's the craziest thing. It's like, you can literally order your own stuff on Amazon. Why would you feel the need to steal someone else's just because you see what it says on there? It's the only thing about living in an apartment complex. Be right back, guys. We are back here, and uh, Night Factor is going to be up really soon. Water walking is improving. Like I said, we're not going to go crazy as far as getting her in a race, but Night Factor is making his maiden. Hey, can he break his maiden here? I hope so. That'd be splendid as Navigator Cindy gives us a wave, either saying congratulations, good luck, or you suck. <laughs> it could be any of those. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. Anyways, here we go. Night Factor. Field of eight, six furlongs. And looking good already. Second favorite. So we have a chance to win. Break his maiden with Night Factor. We're actually going to let the post parade kind of go through the field and do its thing. So there's the one. Rue Ready. 
We're in my Koppel. There's a two shark darts. We're in my horn. I will say it every time I play this game. The presentation of this game is the best out of all the god racers. No arguing that. Trainee Tina is the three. Rigid Cowboy, the favorite, is the four horse. The five is Blues Club. We're in my Dodd. And I'm going to keep saying it. This game's presentation here is the best of all the god racers. The six is Bergmeister. We're in my cane. Seven is Hurry Maria, written by Doyle, and we're on the eight. Night Factor making his eight in DB. Any break has made him. He's looking good. He's looking good. And um, his spurt is slower, so it's going to take him longer to get up to top speed. But we don't have to worry about getting a great, great start because he's a midfield horse or mid pack horse. And he gets out absolutely fantastic. Wow. He gets out like an absolute rocket ship. Which is actually pretty good, considering, because if we need to somehow kind of set the pace or if I want to keep him a little bit further up, I can do so. And he's running a little too fast right now. He's probably just a little excited. We're going to slow him down. He's in the green. Okay, now he's in the blue. Perfect. Okay, I can sense some speed from him. And this horse is literally on my butt. Like, can you, like, move, bro? And now they're going now. We still have plenty of stamina. Now I'm going to get, now I'm going to get him rolling. Now let's see what he can do in the stretch. 1.3 furlongs to go. We're coming from a way back, but look at this spurt here from Night Factor. I don't know if we're going to get second. We may get second, uh, third. A little too late. Okay. Like I said, I know his spurt takes a little bit while, uh, a little bit longer to build up, so I should have gotten him going a little bit sooner. I forgot that race was only six furlongs. Uh, I, I see some speed in him. I definitely see some speed in him. So now I know for sure I just need to get him going a little bit sooner. <laughs> And, of course, six furlongs is always kind of hard to judge because the race is so quick. Usually, if you run seven or eight, it's a better indicator. But he plays his third in his first race. And, again, uh, now we're going to look to um, – yeah, his braking is really good. So, we know getting out is not going to be an issue for him. And uh, let's – he should be good first week of September to race again. So I'll go ahead and just put him in that race. Water walking, we can get her in another one. We can do the same for deep timing. Uh, deep timing. He's only got four more races he can do here. So we're kind of going to have to pick and choose carefully. I'm going to see if I can race him somewhere without a slope. Uh, Lexington. 8.5 furlongs on the dirt. I think that is perfect for him. So there is a race for deep timing and water walking. Let's see what we can do for her. I also want to get her in a race without a slope. Boston, six furlongs, because she you knows she runs eight to ten. She's very limited in her distance. Miami has a slope, but it's only against the Phillies, so I figure, well, that's not the race I wanted. Not in grade three. Here. We'll run her here against the gals. Top two go to the Princess Cup, so who knows? Maybe we can get a bid there. See how she does. All right. Who's up again? I believe it's Deep Factor, right? Or Deep Timing. <laughs> I combined the two names of Deep Timing and Night Factor, Deep Factor. That could eventually be a horse's name. Actually, chances are, which, well, whomever retires first between the two cults and uses a stallion, we could always make uh, that future fall if it is a cult, Deep Factor. Anyways, Deep Timing, back up again. Decent odds. I mean, he pretty much always is in the running to finish in the money. So it's not, I'm not, never really worried about him us finishing outside of the money. I want to obviously go for third place and higher. Um, we got to get him to the front. That's absolutely essential. Like I said, he struggles to get to the front. That's his only downside, I would say. So if we can get him to the front, we, we could and should be good to go. But let's see if we can manage that here. Let's Wait a second. Okay, he actually gets out well here today, and I'm gonna make sure I push him right now because, like I said, he struggles to get to the front, and I believe he's yeah he's gonna keep the lead now. So I believe this actually worked here today. Should have. Yeah, he's in the blue. Even if we lose the lead for a little bit, uh, I'll just kind of let it. I don't want to waste his stamina the entire race just for the sake of trying to keep him in the front. So I remember this type of track um you start your spurt kind of i think on in between turns three and four as opposed to certain tracks you may not need to start till you're literally on the straight 
This is one of those tracks where you may have to start a little bit earlier. Uh, but he's fine right now. I think we have plenty of stamina, so I feel we can win this race if we really bide our time right. And we'll let them, let these horses gas themselves out as that horse is doing. Now they're going, and now we're going to pick up. Now we're going to pick up here with deep timing, and let's see if we can catch those horses a furlong to go. Maybe we started a little bit too late. Yeah, a little bit too late. Way too much ground to make up, but we're going to finish third. So, that, that's, I mean, like I said, top finishing in the money for sure is a goal. It's technically, second goal is to finish in the top three. Definitely could have won that race if I would have started a little bit sooner. But better safe than sorry. Uh, I'd rather make sure we finish in the money than start too early and gas out. But now I know I need to, depending on how far back I am, I guess I should say. Because he's technically supposed to be leading. And if he was leading, I could have started much later like I did in that race. And we probably would have won. But because I actually let him fall off the pace a little bit, I probably should have started him a little bit sooner. Which is fine. No big deal. Like I said, we're finishing in the money. We're still stacking up our points here. So we can create another Gallup Racer original in year three of this game. So it's actually all on the up and up. I'm not sure who's racing today between Night Factor or Water Walking, so we're going to figure it out. I think these will be our last two races here in this video because they do have to get going. And of course we'll be back uh, with another video here to finish out the year. The next one should be the last one to finish out the season. <sighs> okay, let's see. Uh, so Night Factor, and he's the favorite. Alright, that is what I like to see. I figured he was going to be de uh, decent. Glue Factor and Miss Knighty, especially Glue Factor, um, had a decent um, stint. Miss Knighty, we didn't race too much, but still, statistically speaking, she was pretty good as far as just her stats were concerned. Um, her physical attributes, I should say. And Glue Factor actually had a decent career. He placed um, in the top five, I would say, more than half of his racing career, and he did win a couple of races. So, Knight Factor should be really good, and of course, if he's doing this well already, um, as a two-year-old, he should be fantastic, um, you know, as a future stud. There's only one filly in the field, Money Try. But other than that, we are the favorite here with Knight Factor. We can settle him in. Getting good positioning is going to be extremely crucial here because I don't want to get blocked. And yeah, Knight Factor, he just, he looks strong. Let's go ahead and look at him. He just looks really strong when he's out there. Really strong horse, so... This is our chance to um, get him his first win, so hopefully we can do that. So let's make sure we get a great start. Ready? It's okay, start. The positioning, like I said, is extremely key. So we're going to see what the field does. and I'm probably honestly just going to keep him more outside because I, I don't even want to worry about having to deal with another horse. So what I'm actually going to do here for Night Factor, I'm just going to keep him right here. We're running him a little bit higher than he needs to, but this is fine because, again, I want to make sure I have, I have space to make my move. Now, of course, I know the horses in front of us are more than likely going to swing out. Um, I know that's probably, like I said, that's going to happen. So we're just going to take him a little bit further outside because, like I said, I want to make sure we have clear stretch. Clear stretch to do what we need to do. And now we're going to get him going. Now we're going to get... Night Factor going. Now let's see what he can do. Let's see him blow past this field. Night Factor showing his spurt here. And look at this speed. Oh, bad angle. Bad angle. Got to get him up at the wire. And are we going to get there? I don't know if we got there. That angle looks terrible. Maybe I shouldn't have been focusing on the angle and just tried to win the races. I don't even know if we got up there at the wire. I don't think we did. We did not get up there. He definitely didn't. Yep. Wow. Well, that's my fault for switching the camera angles. I should have just stayed focused. I was just trying to get a good shot because I did genuinely want to see the two horse on the inside to see where he was. And, um, yeah, I mean, that, that was our race to win. That's just my fault for changing the camera angle. And, and I did it the wrong way. First of all, I turned it to the grandstands, which is not what I was trying to do. Um, so that kind of messed me up. And caused me to hesitate a little bit. Water walking. She's a long shot here today. So, no chance. We'll see what she can do. But I, I gotta redeem myself with Night Factor. I don't want to end the video on that note. So, I'm gonna try to get him in one more race. And see if we can uh, redeem him. Because that was not good. Water walking. She gets out well. And she just needs to settle in. 
But yeah, I mean, we, I mean, you could see. Not the, he was absolutely flying in the stretch. He was absolutely flying, and uh, there was no competition except for that two horse. And again, we would have beaten that two horse if I wouldn't have, uh, you know, messed myself up trying to change the camera angle. Uh, last time I do that, I'll make sure if I do want to adjust the camera angle, I'm gonna do it prior to starting my spurt. I did it like literally at the most crucial point of my spurt. That just not good decision making but, that, but that's okay we know we're gonna get wins with them um it's not even a problem yeah like i said i may still have to start a little bit sooner as well i think i've i still thought i started pretty late right there um or, or i would say pretty early i started him at 2.5 i probably needed to start him at maybe 2.8 to be honest with you but it's fine we'll redeem ourselves with him like I said, no chance here with water walking today. If we do end up passing a horse, it's just going to be on fatigue alone. And I don't think it's going to happen. She is not really going anywhere, and that's fine. Um, 8 to 10 furlongs. But this this course does have a slope, so she may really not do well with the courses with slopes. Because they do require quite a bit of power. But A, start, A, control. So they're saying maybe we actually ran uh, the best race we could with her. I guess we'll see. <laughs> That's what the rider eval says, and it does. Knife Factor's recorded eval, a record eval, I, I should say, we got for him. Um, so yeah, we are going to get Knife Factor into another race. So let's wait until he looks like he's ready to go, and he's ready to go. Cool. Because yeah, we got we got to redeem ourselves with him. Now, that was a that was a race we were supposed to win, and we did not. Um, more six furlong races. Let's run them eight furlongs again, because like I said, he can't run six. I mean, he could, but it's not ideal. And we'll do that as the last race of this video right here. So let's try to redeem ourselves. When I say redeem, I mean whatever place we're supposed to finish, let's try to finish higher than that. We're expected to finish second, let's win the race. If we're expected to win, then we need to win. We're expected to finish fourth, let's finish, you know, obviously third or higher. I'm thinking we'll be the favorite again. We should be. Same track, same distance. We should be the favorite or close to. And we're the favorite. Like I said, Night Factor, he's, he's going to be decent. I think he'll be a solid grade 3 horse when everything is said and done. I don't know if he's a grade 2 caliber horse yet. But this is a race we can win. And like I said, I'm going to need to really make sure um, I start my spurt sooner. Because it does take him longer to get up to top speed. But you see, once he gets going, once he's there, he's an absolute, absolute rocket ship. <laughs> or... A jet will probably be better. Rocket ship is more so coming out of the gate, but when he's actually in full speed, he looks like a jet flying by. Okay, you see, he comes out so well that he tends to just go straight for the front, and of course, that's not where he needs to run. Now he's in the orange, he's in the yellow, he's in the green. He should be okay right here. Now he's in the blue. So yeah, like I said, we want to make sure we start our spurt right. I think that's going to be the trickiest thing with him. It's not his lack of ability. It's just going to be timing our spurts with him properly. You can see, like I said, once he gets going, his speed is there. But we have to get him going at the right time. And that's about the only thing. All right, so let's get him going now since we are so far back. Um, I think we can squeeze this gap. Yes, we can. Let's see. All right, come on, Night Factor. You are the favorite. Where is that speed? I started him at three furlongs. How much sooner do we need to start? Are you kidding me? This is an even worse race than the last one. Oh, man, that's... <sighs> that one, I don't know. Terrible control. <sighs> hmm. I'm speechless about that one because I started way sooner than I have in his previous two races and we didn't go anywhere effectively. I mean, we weren't blocked. It wasn't like he was running at a bad pace the entire race. He was uncomfortable for maybe two seconds at most. That is, ex that's, ex yeah, I'm speechless as you can obviously tell. I have to redeem myself. I don't want him... I got to figure that out. So now he's seven to fur. Now he's seven to eleven furlongs. Initially, it was seven to ten. So his distance increased, which is good. Um, 
Yeah, that one is extremely questionable. It's <sighs> the only thing with him being a, a mid pack or a midfield horse and his spurt not being the fastest, it does take him longer to get up to speed. But that race, there was no speed at all. Honestly. Well, we're running seven furlongs here. Let's see how he does. It's two races where you're the favorite. Uh, the first race we were the favorite, we definitely should have won, and I had messed that up. That race, I don't know what happened. Huh. Quite perplexing. Quite perplexing. Um, Like I said, the ability is there, clearly. It's just... It seems the timing of his spurt is a lot more tricky than I thought. Not the favorite here today, which is cool. Personally speaking, I mean, like I said, with her horses that I'm still figuring out... I prefer not to be the favorite. We're getting these terrible post positions, though. I don't like starting on the outside. Having inside position uh, would be a lot better, but we have to work with what we have to work with. Um, Let me see. I need to keep him closer toward the, towards the front. Yes, he's a midfield horse, but um, since his spurt does take longer, I certainly should not be keeping him too far towards the back. Now, I'm going to move him inside here. We're going to move him all the way inside, actually. You're going to move them all the way inside. And hopefully we get a space to clear up. And I'm just kind of going to let him run. If he wants to run a little bit faster, I'm just going to let him go. Because I'm seeing now, because the spurt takes longer to build up, we're going to have to keep him a little bit closer towards the, the, the front than I initially would like. Now, we, we don't really have space here. So hopefully we can fit through a gap. So we're getting him going now. Nobody should move. And I think we can shoot this gap. Okay, and he's moving through. He's moving through. Okay, so it appears with him we definitely have to keep him closer towards the front. We have to keep him way closer towards the front to have a chance. And I don't think we're going to beat that horse at the wire, but that is much better. I, I can actually end our day on that note. Okay, that's what I figured. We really have to keep him closer towards the front because he takes so much longer. Because, I, I mean, I started that spurt later than the, than the previous race where I started really early and we didn't go anywhere. I started his spurt here in this race a little bit later, but it was because I got him closer towards the front by the time I started. So I need to put that in his notes. Keep close to front. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. That, that is clearly the, the biggest factor in, in racing night factor. Making sure I keep him close to the front by the time I start his spurt. That way he can he doesn't have so much ground to make up. Um, you know, if his spurt was really fast, then yeah, we could probably start him much later and just he would like Cosmo Gallon or Gallop Racer 3 series, she's a horse that I can, you know, have maybe a little bit further back off the lead, and then once she gets going, she gets up to speed so quickly. Night factor is not that case. It takes him a little bit longer, but then when he once he gets there. He is able to roll efficiently. So now I know. I have it in my notes, so I, I won't forget now just to keep him close to the front. I would say two or three lengths max off the pace or off the lead horse. That way we have um, an amplitude amount of time to, uh, like I said, have him overtake if need be. Because if he's five or six lengths off the lead, his his spurt and speed, unfortunately, is not enough where I think we'll get him up into the get him up into the finishing point. So we have to keep him at max, I would say, two or three lengths off the lead by the time we get into the stretch. That way he has the space to get going. Um, so that is that. Uh, we have, like I said, uh, we'll have one more episode after this one, and that'll be mainly racing. Deep timing can only race three more times before the end of the season, so we'll probably get him in another race. And then water walking. We'll uh, get her in another race, and then we'll try Night Factor out once again. But um, we'll get a win with him. Now that I'm, I, th I think I figured it out, I'm, I'm positive we'll get a win with him in our next opportunity. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I always appreciate you guys' love and support on the channel. And uh, we'll be back with some horse racing content, as always. But until next time, Horse Racing Gamers, sending out. Hope you have a great and fantastic day. See ya. And goodbye.